When it comes to rivals, Paul definitely cements himself as one of Ash's greatest, if not the greatest rival that Ash ever had, and possibly one of the best representations on how we look at Pokemon. But today, we're going to prove something here. Today, we're going to go through and throw Paul into the Masters 8 and see if he can honestly clear. Now, when it comes to the Masters 8 here, we're going to keep the rules as it is. Because in all honesty, I do feel like the final round should have all been six versus six. But when Journeys was rushing everything, I kind of felt like the final banners weren't going to be anything too special here. So we'll be throwing Paul against each one of the Masters 8 here, minus Ash, as he'll be taking his place here. And they'll lose in the conditions that they already had. So whoever lost in a 3v3 will lose in a 3v3. And whoever lost in a 6v6 is going to lose in a 6v6. Now, let's talk about Pokemon. Now, I should have expected this. And you guys definitely crushed the poll here with having him with Galarian Pokemon. And in all honesty, I should have expected this. But again, you guys decided it. So... Here's what we're going to do, right? It's considering Paul has a very unique arsenal, we're only going to keep Torterra and Electivire because those are really just his main two. Plus, he has the most experience with those two, and I doubt he would go into the Masters 8 without those two at all. Now, when it comes to selecting Pokemon, I actually asked a good friend of mine, and I'm not going to say his name. Um, I'm going to call him... D. So D here uh, chose six Pokemon that actually fit Paul here. And these Pokemon, which I can also agree on, were Corviknight, which is pretty much a unanimous one, Duraludon as well, a unanimous pick amongst the community, but Galarian Moltres, Galarian Articuno, Urshifu, and Zarud. Now these Pokemon all fit Paul for their specific reasons, and I'll get to that in a well in the matches however the ones i picked were dreadnaw tyrantrum toxicity obstagoon grimmsnarl and <clears throat> excuse me and copper Raja, with an honorable mention being sandaconda or silly cobra whichever one paul decides to get and just keep for maybe later uses here now with that being said here and with Paul's feats in the anime with him being able to possibly beat have beaten Brandon and probably the other frontier brains how does Paul with this selection of Pokemon with his mindset his tactical genius really do here now do remember one of Paul's few things is pretty much battlefield control and I feel like this team does do it pretty well here now let's get into the Masters 8 and we're gonna go from Pretty much easiest to hardest based on how paul's done and keep in mind we'll also be reflecting on paul's battle records and how he's had dealt pretty much how he's dealt with things over the years here now the easiest one i see paul beating is lance here and simply because here this is because lance kind of does himself in with these attacks here he he's headstrong you know he's too direct and this pokemon i do think that do they they fit him they do you know he has a high dragon which in all honesty is one of the more dangerous pseudo legendaries in my opinion and i just think that his team of high dragon um his gyarados which i do think he would leave as a regular gyarados in all honesty i do feel like he should have had mega evolution with his gyarados rather than gigantamaxing it here with the bond that they have and with it almost being like similar to his ace here which i just i just really don't get it here plus he does have his dragonite which is one of his most respective and probably one of his starter pokemon as well here the reason why i'm saying that lance is pretty easy for paul is because lance does not have any field control he pretty much relies on the brute strength and the power of their pokemon and we saw how Diantha was easily able to exploit that with her team, which had a lot more versatility. So using Lance's team in the original, which was again, Gyarados, Gigantamax, Dragonite, and High Dragon. What's the team I think Paul would use with the combination of Pokemon we gave or at least announced that he would have for this tournament earlier? Now, the, pretty much the team I picked is Copperaja. 
Obstagoon and Galarian Articuno. Now, the reason why I picked these three is because I think Paul would honestly be able to prepare easier for Lance than some of the other ones in the Masters A here. The reason why, and the way he, I think he would do it is probably have Kaparaja go first here. Keep in mind, we are giving Paul full experience with these Pokemon and his full training experience. So these Pokemon would have been at their strongest, if not at their at their most dangerous, if you think about it. I think Kaparaja would definitely be a good counter to High Dragon because of its endurance level and being able to use moves like Iron Head to counter most of the long range attacks, Flash Cannon, Earthquake, and possibly setting up Stealth Rocks. So that way when Gyarados comes in against Obstagoon, who I think Paul would probably teach some electric type moves as well to kind of, I guess you say balance it out. But then Obstagoon is actually really dangerous for Lance here because if Lance has any ailment dealing moves, it could activate Guts. And this is Reckless Guts, by the way, which is way stronger than Ursaring's levels of Guts here. So Obstagoon is a very clear problem from the get-go. And last but not least, obviously it's a Galarian Articuno versus a VMAX Dragonite. Yeah, I really shouldn't have to say much here. The Galarian Articuno's moveset is absolutely ridiculous. Dark Ice, having, um, you know, Steel, Normal, and even Psychic typing with it. And even could you still use its Ice typing with it as well. And knowing Paul, he might have a Fairy move up its sleeve as well. So in all honesty, I don't really see Lance, you know, um, being a real challenge for Paul. And the simple reason why is he's headstrong. He had no strategic um, advantage over uh, over Diantha except trying to wear her down. But let's move on to the next one. And this one I think would be a low difficulty. Lance, I would probably give like a no difficulty. But I think Iris would actually be a little bit tougher than Lance here. Now, Iris's team honestly wouldn't really do much to Paul here especially if we use the team of Dredna, Zarud, sorry I said I almost said Garud. so Dredna, Zarud, and Tyrantrum. The reason why I think Dredna goes first is probably because he is a very good counter to Escadrill, especially with the water and rock typing. So a Hydro Pump or maybe even a Scold could definitely do some real damage to Escadrill and I think Paul would definitely teach this thing Earthquake which is probably the best counter to Pokemon with Dig. Either Earthquake or Earth Power, which is something Paul has ample amounts of experience with due to Nidoking. And this means that Dreadnought may actually get a very quick victory, especially with its high durability level. And Paul probably teaching it things like um, Iron Defense or maybe even increasing its attack power or its special abilities with Shell Smash. Now, Iris' Dragonite is honestly... um. It's mince me. I hate to say it because Iris's Dragonite is one of my favorite Dragonites out there. But uh, yeah, in all honesty, I don't really see it lasting long with Paul having the experience with, honestly, Lance. I think if he could figure out Lance's Dragonite, which is possibly above, I would definitely say above Iris's Dragonite because it definitely has the transformation edge and possibly the durability and stamina edge as well. While Dragonite could possibly have a strength edge here. But the sheer fact that Cynthia was able to use Disarming Voice and then get in with a finishing move that fast. Yeah, um, I think Zarud could do the same thing, especially with Paul put you know paul's level of training here zarud if you guys don't know is a grass and dark type and i actually think that zarud would probably be trained to be very similar to infernape in a way having an aggressive battling style being able to close the distance against someone like dragonite pretty quickly and they zarud has a very good move set if you guys don't know this thing actually has like synthesis and jungle recovery which can restore its health pretty easily here and i honestly think that if the if push comes to shove here zarud could probably use something like leer or paul might even use something like shadow sneak or play rough against uh dragonite here something to really just get dragonite off its game and then probably wrap it up with something like a dark lariat or maybe even use facade or maybe counter 
You, you never know what Paul's really going to use here. And I actually think the biggest problem for Iris is that she's still a little young when it comes to battling. She doesn't have that same battle experience when it comes to characters like Ash. You might say, oh, well, her Haxorus, you know, was able to go toe to toe with, you know, Cynthia's Garchomp which again is one of the strongest Pokemon in anime. And then you could be like, well, Cynthia was able to beat, you know, Paul's ace Torterra, you know, in one shot. Now, I would also have to argue that the power levels from back then to now are just vastly different. Now, again, you could also make the mega evolution argument. I would not blame you. But again, there's a little problem we, um, we have here. And it's the fact that Haxorus... Um, lost to Ash's Dragonite and Paul came in when Ash already had beaten Iris and then proceeded to not only use his Garchomp here as pretty much like a sparring partner but was able to beat Ash's Dragonite in that sparring match and he was telling Ash to actually try here and his Dragonite still lost despite the fact that Paul was simply just trying to train him I think a Tyrantrum trained by Paul with things like Dragon Dance Flamethrower maybe a little bit of Dragon Tail Crunch and maybe even like a very decent um ailment afflicting move is going to take out Iris's Dragonite sorry not Dragonite Haxorus a lot quicker and probably with minimal difficulty. Now we enter the mid difficulty stage where we have Steven Stone himself. Now in all honesty, Steven is just massively impressive. His fight with Mega Metacross against Kyogre, surviving Mega Rayquaza, almost beating Ash in the Masters 8 here. In all honesty, um, yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous here. But the problem here is Paul is just way more strategic than ashes and i think the pokemon he's going to use here is doraladon galarian moltres and corviknight the reason why i would say these pokemon is because they have the advantages that ashes team don't doraladon has a power advantage over a lot of steven's pokemon and definitely over agron galarian moltres is being a dark and fire type or maybe just a dark and flying type i gotta probably redo that as well um still has a major advantage and could probably sweep most of steven's team if not be the one to deal the final blow and then you have corviknight who could possibly gigantamax being the final nail in the coffin i think paul would definitely use a gigantamax corviknight just due to the sheer fact that corviknight's speed would be boosted and he could use things like max drain or gi these like giant aoe moves just to counter mega metacross's speed so yeah i think he does take out steven mid difficulty and now we reach the point where we get one of our favorite rival battles of all time. Now, I will be making a full breakdown about this with them using their original teams. No gimmicks, no, no nothing. Well, we'll have Alon have his gimmick, but Paul won't have any gimmicks. And again, I still think even without gimmicks, Paul can take down Alon here. And here's why. When we see Ash versus Alon, with Ash having one of his strongest teams here, he did great against Alon. And the thing is, no one had a move that could take over the battlefield or cause any ailment damage. And I think the reason why... This is sorry. I think this is the reason why Paul's going to pretty much take the win here with a combination of Toxtricity, Grimmsnarl, and Electivire. See, why I chose this team is because Toxtricity is perfect for a paralysis poison combination. And I definitely could see it using moves like Poison Jab, Toxic Spikes, and again, Thunderbolt or Thunder to cause a paralysis and poison on all all of Alon's Pokemon here. Grim Snarl is a perfect counter to Malamar trying to stay away from the poison because of his elasticity ability, meaning that, well, Grim Snarl could just stretch his arms however long and just slam Malamar into the ground here. Plus, its moves such as like close combat, play rough, thunder punch, possibly even learning things like a poison jab or maybe even a gyro ball definitely cements it here as definitely a monster. And Electivire kind of speaks for himself here as being the closer of the fight. 
But let's say Electivire loses to Mega Charizard X. Well, <laughs> Gigantamax Toxtricity could clear. Now, you might say, why am I giving Paul multiple Gigantamax Pokemon? Is because I think he's versatile enough and definitely has the mindset and capacity enough to pretty much use these kind of Pokemon. I wouldn't say he would have a Gigantamax for every single one of them. No, no, no. I don't think he would, but I think at least like using this ability with other Pokemon, just kind of like how Ash was able to use it with Pikachu, and we have Leon using it with three different Pokemon in Cinderace, Rillaboom, and his Charizard, obviously. So in all honesty, uh, yeah, I think Paul should be able to use it far better than what Leon has, having a more versatile set as well. And I think he would just be able to do it pretty easily. I think he would beat Alon easily because Alon has never dealt with anything that has to deal with status ailments. But now we reach the area where we're doing the six on six matches. And in all honesty, Paul is at his home pretty much feels at home here i mean the lake acuity battle where he dominated ash he's gonna cook up a strategy that pretty much has everything set right for him from start to finish paul is going to be in control of the battle and in all honesty i do feel like ash should have lost against paul here imagine him being the only rival that ash never beat that almost you know destroyed ash's confidence and in all honesty Paul did have that in the bag. He had the field control. He had the endurance advantage. And Infernape used three flare blitzes, was hit with poison, and, and was paralyzed. He should have lost that. But anyway, let's move on to his first opponent, Diantha. Now, Diantha is definitely a problem here, especially with her understanding of things like field control, status ailments, and all that good stuff here. And I actually think she is the one of the few bigger threats here to Paul. Especially with her Aurorus here being able to use Light Screen. Light Screen being a move that pretty much carries over until the... Sorry, carries over to the next opponent here. So the team I think Paul would definitely use is Corviknight, Dreadnought, Copperaja, Electivire, Urshifu, and Galarian Articuno to be the closer or maybe even a Gigantamax Urshifu to pretty much wear it down. The reason why I say this is because number one, Corviknight should easily be able to deal with Halucha as it could take advantage of Halucha's, you know, sorry, um, Halucha's, uh, whatchamacallit, fighting type weakness. <laughs> and then you have Dreadnought, which could actually be a field setup for Stealth Rocks for Paul. Then you have Copperaja, who I think would definitely be a good powerhouse for the team here. Electivire, being one of his most trusted Pokemon, is definitely going to be the wrecker of the team along with Copperaja. And then you have Urshifu and Galarian Articuno, who are pretty much the wild cards and aces of the teams, respectively. And I actually think Galarian Articuno may or may not beat Mega Gardevoir, but I think that Diantha's team would actually be so exhausted from the sheer versatility that Paul's team has that Paul would be able to get a very convincing win. Next up is definitely his hardest and his most well-deserved challenge, Cynthia. Now, this one is definitely going to be Paul thinking his hardest on this one here. And I actually think he can beat Cynthia in this kind of scenario I really do especially with the Galarian Pokemon and the fact that it may you know he did see let's say he saw half her team with Iris here I definitely think that Paul would definitely be ready for Milotic Garchomp and Gastrodon pretty easily but he probably knows that Cynthia has a lot more Pokemon that could be an unpredictable wild card in battle Plus, Cynthia's understanding of field control and her willing to throw in Garchomp early to even damage other Pokemon definitely means that she and Paul are going to have a very good battle. Now, the Pokemon I think Paul would use in this situation would be Obstagoon, Grimmsnarl, Duraludon, Zarud, uh, Galarian Moltres, and finally, G-Max Torterra. The reason why these ones would be good is because Obstagoon's normal type negates anything Spiritomb could do. 
I think Grimstar versus Rose Raid would definitely be a very good matchup. The rest of them kind of just pour in there as extra support characters, or sorry, not extra support, extra versatility or an extra arsenal for the rest of the team here. And then we could have Paul's get back against Garchum with Torterra, with him probably using the Gigantamax against Cynthia's Mega Evolution, using Torterra's better durability and better power against Mega Garchum speed and taking advantage of the fact that when Garchum Mega evolves, <laughs> It's a lot slower, and I think Paul would be able to capitalize on that pretty easily, getting him a significant win. But of course, high diff. Now, Leon. Now, believe it or not, Leon is actually one of my least favorite characters when it comes to the Masters 8. The reason why is because he was rushed as a character. He didn't really have anything um, really too special here, except that he was just an overpowered, pretty much overpowered antagonist or pseudo antagonist for ash to beat he was the ultimate wall someone that can take out an entire champions team or at least half a champions team with just one pokemon now in all honesty i i don't think he's a i don't think he's a very strategical battler either yes he is a champion he's the champion above all champions here but again i really don't see i i really don't see how this would benefit him here you see he and ash have the same mindset and i think this would honestly be very predictable and i hate to say it but it would be very predictable for paul who knows how ash thinks inside and out remember they're both polar opposites they're basically two sides of the same mirror and i think paul would definitely go all out in this battle having obstagoon Toxtricity, Tyrantrum, uh, Galarian Articuno, Electivire, and Torterra. And I think this battle would be definitely the most hardest fought. And I definitely think Paul would be cooking up every strategy he can to easily get rid of, you know, um, Leon's Pokemon as quick as possible here. And considering Leon does not have anything to really affect the battlefield except Mr. Rhyme's Ice, I think Toxic Spikes is definitely going to be a big part in how Paul does take down Leon and definitely is going to use Galarian Articuno and Electivire to wear down Gigantamax Charizard or any Gigantamax Pokemon to the point where he could get the dub over Leon here or even his Gigantamax Charizard versus Gigantamax Torterra. Paul is conditioned for, you know, type disadvantages, especially with Torterra and Electivire. So I do think that it would definitely be a close battle. It would definitely be a hard fought one, but Leon is using strategies Paul knows how to counter very well, such as the counter shield. He does that with Inteleon. I could definitely see an underground move coming out of nowhere and him just straight up just capitalizing on leon pretty much using the same moves ash does and in all honesty i think paul clears the masters eight mid to high difficulty or at least mid to extreme difficulty as in order of the arrangement with the only one being less of a difficulty being both iris and lance for the reasons i stated earlier but that's going to be all for today you guys please comment down below like and subscribe and share it to your friends. Thank you, D, for helping me with this video or at least the Pokemon list here. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.